Morning, how are we doing? So I pitched up with a PlayStation Vita, as you can see. Now, if I'm honest, it was a bit of a random purchase, a um, bit impulsive, but I'll explain more as the video goes on. Now, this isn't going to be an in-depth review or overview. I'm just going to show you a little bit of, of what it's like. Not really an unboxing as such. Obviously, I've already unboxed it, already played on it. But uh, an unboxing in the sense that I'll show you what's inside and what you get with it. And I've got a few games as well. But if you're expecting, you know, anything too in-depth when it comes to an overview, like I say, this, this isn't going to be it. But if you just want a sort of a light-hearted, casual look at what the PlayStation is and to hear my opinions of what I think of it so far after just a few days, then you may or may not enjoy it. So, um... I'll show you. Right then, so let's take you through a little bit of what you get inside the box. Now this is going to be a disaster of a video because I haven't got a tripod yet. So I'm going to have to manually move this camera around. Ooh. So it's going to be an yeah, absolutely ridiculous mess on this uh, creased bed. You know, if you sit on the bed, it's going to get creased. What can I say? So, PlayStation Vita First Edition Bundle comes with the game called Little Deviants. Not actually played that one yet, but apparently it's um, pretty basic, but it's one which utilises the kind of the tilt and touch options on the Vita, which is, which is pretty good. So let's open it up with a little thing at the bottom there. First thing you're greeted with, well, at least the one I'm greeted with, is the little a box in a box. And that is, the Vita's actually stored inside that, or it will be if you buy it new which I did, but I've been using mine of course, so it's uh, outside of the box. And then you get your usual things like little, do you want to see that? An empty little <laughs> bag where some of the wires were. And all the rest of it, paraphernalia, the memory card is stored on there or in there. In that gap I've took it out and obviously put it in the actual console. Now my one at the front, if it, actually if I can show it, as everything falls out now. Um, yeah, it comes with a four gig card. And I don't think they all come with cards, so um, yeah, you might have to bear that in mind, you'll probably want to buy one, because you will need it for saving games and downloads if you're into that kind of stuff. And then again, just a load of rubbish here, which you don't really need, um, you know, protection plans, or maybe you do need it, I don't know. Extra little leaflets, this is still sealed. Safety guide, I will not be needing that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what you get with this one is, with this first edition bundle, is a limited edition PlayStation Vita case and I'll unzip this which is a nightmare to do with one hand especially when it's just not really worth showing you inside so you get the Vita which you'd put in there and then here you can store a few cards or cards whatever they are I guess and does that flip around I thought it did maybe not again doing this with one hand is a nightmare but yeah it, it looks pretty nice it smells like really odd as if it's just come out of a chemical factory. So I think I'll put that back in the box, I think, for now. So anyway, the Vita itself. Here we go. I won't show you the leads that connect it and all that kind of nonsense. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing like a beast. Now, the one thing I've noticed, and you will probably notice on this, and maybe as the video progresses, it picks up dust like it's going out of fashion. Honestly, the, the screen, you're going to have to constantly clean it. And, I mean, this is... Look at it everywhere. It's crazy. I haven't got a dirty house, in case you were wondering. <laughs> it's just, you know, touch screen, it's very prone to, to picking up dust and the like. So, put it on by... Hang on, how do you put it on? Oh, you're holding that button there. I thought for a minute you might hold the power button. Either way. I've only had this three days, you know, and I still can't work out how to do it. So, I love how that light comes up blue there. I don't know if it looks blue on the camera or whether it looks white. Looks really classy, I think. Now, on the buttons, these aren't lit up. Which is a shame, you know, they just kind of um, faded out a little bit there. It would have been nice, but not the end of the world. But anyway, so you're greeted with its, this screen, February 19th, today, 11 or 3 in the morning. Touch screen. So again, trying to do this with one hand is a nightmare. So you're presented with a screen similar to this, or maybe exactly like this. You've got your welcome park at the top there. Now, welcome park is just a place, well, let's click on it. I won't go into, into detail. But, um, yeah, in fact, let's click right off. I can't be bothered going through that. It's just, think of it like, from what I've experienced with it so far, like a place such as, um, you know, where you have them brain power games, like the DS or, the, you know, Nintendo-y kind of things. Makes you think, putting numbers in the right order, doing things to beat the time limit, that kind of stuff. And they're usually, well, I think they're all free. Uh, maybe you can download them, which costs money. Maybe you can download some more, which are free. I'm not quite certain. Party mode, I don't know what this is. I've never done it, but I'm going to get something to do with playing online with your friends and maybe cross chat and all that kind of stuff. 
PlayStation Store, we all know what that is. Then we've got something called Nier. Now, I've only briefly been on that. Nier is essentially an app which will tell you who's playing on the Vita in your area, which is pretty handy. But the one thing I've noticed which it doesn't tell you, and like I say, I've not spent a long time with it, so maybe it does tell you, I just haven't seen it, but it doesn't tell you people's gamer tags, which you could say is good, because then, you know, you, you can hide behind the anonymity that the, the internet and online gaming gives. But then it's kind of silly in a way, because if it's telling you who's near, then why isn't it telling you their usernames? Because what's the point just telling you that there's five people playing on your street? It seems a little bit silly. Um, but maybe there's more to it. I've not really been on it. Friends, pretty self-explanatory. Now, um, let's click on it anyway, because I don't know whether this is Vita Friends or whether this is Friends as in on your PlayStation network as well. Let's just see what happens when it comes up. So uh, click the button. All very touch screeny, which is nice. Now I'm sure you can use the buttons as well. You know, if you didn't want to um, use a touch screen. So there's me at the top, my little lemons thing, Alex7892 with an underscore. Feel free to add me, I'm very anti-social. So um, don't expect to be playing <laughs> too much with me because I just hardly ever do that. Not for any other reason than I'm usually playing something, you know, like a, a single player game or whatever. But you know, now and again I'll play with people as some of you will know. So, um, yeah, there's my AFX2 win. Um, my mate Rob, I used to go to school with him. Um, if it hasn't been online for ages. Some people here, oh, I, I, I don't even know who some of these people are. You know what it's like when you kind of sign online um, and you get these friend requests and people add you. I know who some, there's my cousin at the top there who signs on and signs off straight away whenever I'm online. Bit weird, can't work that one out. <laughs> um, yeah, and then a lot of people, <coughs> excuse me again, from um, some of you from YouTube, you'll recognise yourselves, uh, other, you, other of you uh, who, aren't be, who aren't be watching this, others who won't be watching this, <laughs> butchering the English language, who I've met either at work or randomly, or who I used to go to school with again, so yeah, not that many people, um, I don't really... I play online a great deal with people. I tend to go online for a quick kind of burst for a half an hour or an hour myself. You know, a little bit antisocial, like I say. So anyway, okay, so if there's no option to use the touch screen to swipe down, then you press this button. This blue button is essentially like a back button. So press that, you go back to your main menu, and then you can come down. Back to the main menu. Next option is group messaging. So again, I guess that's just if you've got a lot of friends you want to talk to. Trophies. I've not really investigated that, whether it's trophies which are independent, you know, separate from the PlayStation 3 trophies you've earned, or what. Or whether it's just the um, Vita trophies, not sure. Photographs, self-evident. Network operator, uh, uh, browser. If you scroll up, you get music, videos, remote play, content manager, I guess which is DLC and maybe stuff on your hard drive I, I suppose whether it's external or or what not quite certain maps I think that's Google Maps get your settings which again is obvious and then you get your games Uncharted Golden Abyss Asphalt Injection Hot Shots Golf World Invitation in fact let's take a break there because let's show you what games I've got rather than just look at them on here so let's show you the ones which I've just named straight off we have Uncharted Golden Abyss. Now this is really good. When I put this on, and this was the first game that I tried, the graphics just blew me away. Honestly, it was like unbelievable. Am I seeing this right? Is this like a dream? <laughs> you know, maybe hyping it up a bit more there, or a bit too much. But yeah, it essentially looks like a, a PlayStation 3, and that's what I found with the graphics. A lot of people saying, oh, it's not quite PlayStation 3, it's a cross between kind of a, you know, PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, like a PlayStation 2.5. Maybe it is, but to someone like me, who's got like a bit of an untrained, you know, graphic eye, it just looks to me like a PS3 version, albeit scaled down to fit on a small screen. So I was blown away when I saw these graphics. And um, yeah, brilliant game. On the back, doesn't really show you much. You know, in fact, is that even graphics or is it just like some kind of concept art? Not really certain. So that's that. Next one up I've got is Asphalt Injection. Think of this as a cross between, say, Blur, the racing game, and um, maybe a bit of Burnout, but maybe that's not the best example to use. It's a pretty decent game, you know, but um, yeah, I can see this one maybe flying down in price quite quickly. It's not bad, but it's, it's not great either. Modernation Race... Oh, sorry, Mod Nation Racers Road Trip. Yeah, this is um, 
like a, it's it's basically just again like the PlayStation Three version. Think of it as Mario Kart with more customization, weapons, and that kind of stuff. It's it's pretty fun. Next one up is Wipeout 2048. Now I'm not a massive Wipeout fan. In fact, I'm usually rubbish at it. I just can't control the ships. I bang into the sides on a on a constant basis. And but I, I thought I'd get this. It looks really good. And when I, again, when I put it on graphically, it was it looked amazing. Like the detail in the background of the cities with the neon lights. And you don't really get to see them because the game's so fast. So to have the, the really detailed graphics in the background like that, which you notice for a split second, you know, I'm blown away by it. I thought it looked absolutely fantastic. So that's that one again. You can't really work much out from that. You get Little Deviants, which, as I say, comes with the Vita. This is still sealed, but, you know, obviously I'll give it a try soon, but I've just not had any real desire to put that on yet. And then you get this one, Hot Shots Golf World Invitational. And this is without question, without question, my favourite game so far. It is so addicting, it's ridiculous. See, I use the American version there, addicting. Addictive. That's worrying. I, I said that. <laughs> addicting, brilliant. Okay, so, um, open up these cases, what do you get? You get usually, well, always, I should say, you get your, uh, your little SD card, unless it's in your machine, of course and that'll be housed in there. And then you will sometimes get a little leaflet in here. This one you get because it's the online pass activation code, but you don't always get something. Let's take um, Mod Nation Racers, for example. So you open up this box and you're greeted with the cart and nothing else. And I just think that looks really bad. Really cheap, really bland. You know, even if they're just gonna stick like a little instruction manual in there, or like a one sheet of paper or a little poster or something. I mean, I wouldn't use it, but it would be just, you know, it'd be nice to have. But that just looks, I think, a little bit cheap, a little bit, a little bit greedy and a little bit selfish, really. You know, how hard is it to put something in? That's rubbish. Just a little slip of paper, you know, with the code on there to use for, like I say, the online activation. But at least it, it makes it look better. It fills it out a bit more. So that's a shame that the majority are going to be empty cases. Now, speaking of the cases, let me give you a comparison here in terms of size, because I was shocked when I saw how tiny these things are. I'd heard they were small, but it's one thing, you know, hearing it and then seeing it yourself. So here we've got a random Xbox 360 game. Halo 3 ODST. And then let's put a random PS3 game. Take that SingStar. <laughs> Brilliant game. If you don't like it, you're mental. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you can see, a bit of a difference, you know, in terms of size, as we all know. The PlayStation 3 version is a lot smaller. But then you put the PlayStation Vita game on top of that, and it comes down even more, as you can see. It's so tiny. You put it in the middle there. It's ridiculous. And then just to give you a, a better scale, put it in the middle of an Xbox 360 game. It's ridiculous. They literally, they're like... I don't know. They're the tiniest things I've ever seen. But I like them, and I like how they're blue, you know, hence, I guess, the, the Blu-ray thing. Or is it Blu-ray? Might be making that up. Either way, I just love the fact that, it, that it, it's blue. It looks really, really nice. A nice alternative, I guess, to the 360's green and to the PlayStation 3's kind of transparent gig that they've got going on. So that's that. Now, let me show you um, a couple of the games. Now, this is going to be really, really hard, of course, because it's one-handed. So you take your card, which I just threw into picture there. Now at the top, you probably won't be able to see, but you have to take my word for it, you get, a, and it is a little fiddly, so fiddly that I can't even get it in, in camera and I'm struggling with it. So you lift it up, the little latch there, and then you just simply put the card in, that so you struggle with it, and press it in, click the thing over, let that down, and then, so there we go. Once it's in, Hot Shots Golf World Invitational, Oh, nearing off the camera. Click on that. You're greeted with a menu. Now, every menu's different. I guess it, de it depends on how the developer wants to lay it out. But this one, as you can see, PlayStation Store at the bottom. I guess that'll be in the future to download extra characters and courses. A daily international tournament, or tourney, as they say, which I guess uh, is just for online players. And the official website. And then start in the middle, which I want to do. So I'll click on that. And as I say, it looks really dusty. But you're going to have to get used to it because it's touch screen, you know, there's a lot of dust which is going to uh, accumulate on the screen and surrounding areas. Or it could be this camera. We'll see. So yeah, let's see if I can skip through all this. So I want to continue. So let's click on continue. Yeah, this is hard work doing it with one hand. And then you're greeted with this weird little creature 
or sitting on a desk. Now you can design that creature, so that probably says a lot about me that I've designed it like that. But you can only design it with the items you've unlocked, you know, for that character. And I've not really unlocked a lot, uh, unlocked a lot for it yet. But yeah, I don't know what the hell it's about, it's a bit weird. And you get that woman there and she just basically meets and greets you every single time. The accents do annoy you, but um, I, it's a mixture of British accents, American accents, a bit of Japanese in there. I, but I'm not quite certain whether it's one of them situations where you're getting like, um, someone pretending to be British, because it just sounds so silly sometimes, it just doesn't sound quite right. So anyway, that's that. Let's go to um, single player. Click on challenge. Now, so far, I've unlocked, as you can tell you. Now, that empty star in the middle means I haven't done that. In fact, I finished 20th, which is last. Brilliant. Uh, haven't done that one yet. This is the hardest level. Won that one, won that one, won that one, won quite a lot. Let's actually just click on one randomly. And here we go. Character, selection screen. So you've got this Yuna. Now, you see what I mean about that kind of Japanese schoolgirl kind of fascination they have? So that's that. That's Yuna. Another guy called Yamato. You know, like I say, very manga style, Japanesey, and Isabel. Let's click on that one. Why not, eh? All right, whatever. Let's have... Oh, you can change the um, outfit as well, and you can design it yourself if you so inclined. So let's let's just click on that one. And then you just click through a variety of options, such as what kind of clubs you want to use, what kind of ball you want to strike, and you know all this kind of stuff. I guess ultimately it does make a difference, but you know I'm not that um, bothered about. It. Again, look when it goes like that's crazy. I'm probably just making it worse by going like that, putting more dust on it. Now it's a really simplistic game, but I, I absolutely think it's fantastic, and maybe that's in itself what makes it so brilliant. You know, it's just you can get a little bit in depth if you like. But um, ultimately, you know, just use one button, quite frankly. So let's fast forward. Let's see, let's put the music on now. Some of the music is funny. And the sound is really good, to be fair. So you're presented with this straight away. You've got the X, which starts the power. And then you stop it in the middle. There you go. Rubbish. Oh dear. Rubbish shot. I'll do this one handed, give me a break. So, and I find just, it's so relaxing, and even when you do badly, it's not stressful. Apart from when you have two bad shots in a row, and now I want to smash the place up. <laughs> I tell you what, let's finish the hole, why not? Oh, honestly, I'm using excuses, it's just difficult to judge. So it looks like a par four, we've got a chance of making par. Let's, uh... Hey, there we go, look at that. Let me just say what you should do when you quit a game and how you do it. First of all, if you press this button, this button here is essentially the one which goes back. It's almost like a main menu thing. So if you press that, that comes up, then use the, the swipe or the touch screen to, to do that. And then once you've done that, you've essentially come out of the game. Then you can lift this up. This is where it gets a little bit fiddly. And I, so I'm going to have to tilt the camera there, even if I can do it. No, I'll, I'll do it. I'll show you there. So you lift that up, like I say, pretty fiddly, and then you push in on the top of the cart, and it'll spring up, and then you just pull it out. But pretty hard work, really, and not as not as simple as you'd have thought. Let's give um, Uncharted Three a little Uncharted Three, Uncharted Golden Abyss a little bit of a go. So again, you just get it, put it in. Sorry about this. It's really hard to do. So uh, I should get like a tripod or something. I guess it usually helps. Make it much easier next time. So, uh, right, so that's in, and as you can see, it's ready. Click on it. Uncharted Golden Abyss. So you presented with a similar menu like last time. Now, I know I said the, the Golf one had three options at the bottom. I guess it depends how they, as the developers, want to make their own menu, but ultimately it'll say start somewhere. So click on that. So touch to start. Let's do it. Music's pretty good. So continue, yeah, let's just continue from where we were. Uh, continue chapter one, yep. Ooh, 
Wow. So the loading times, like I say, are pretty, um, pretty evident. In fact, is that actually dirt on the PS? On, on the Vita, or is it on my camera, on the lens? Probably the lens. I'm trying to wipe it off the bloody screen. Okay, so, um, there we go. Looks fantastic. It essentially just looks like a PS3 game. Or slightly scaled down, but, you know, the usual stuff. I'm not going to be able to play this, by the way. It's going to be a nightmare, but... You know, there's your zooming in, and you would be able to move around if I could, but I, I can't. So just think of Uncharted 3, no, think of the what? PS, What's the hurry? No. and you get this. I mean, just look at the uh, like the vegetation and stuff there. It's beautiful. So it's a fantastic game. Looks really amazing, quite frankly. Blown away when I saw it, thinking, Christ almighty, is this the kind of standard, we're, you know, we're going to have to expect on a PS Vita? And this is a launch title. So yeah, really, absolutely loving this PlayStation. It's a great bit of kit. Music's fantastic, the sound's fantastic. So yeah, that's about it for now, guys. Just thought I'd show you a very quick overview. Like I say, it's not in-depth, but it's brilliant. Now, it was pretty pricey, I've got to be honest. But, you know, I wanted to get one, and even though the purchase was a little bit impulsive in a sense, you know, I had wanted to get one for a long, long time since I, you know, first heard about it last year. So yeah, I'm really loving it. My favourite game, without question, is this beast. Like I say, Hot Shots Golf World Invitational. But the rest of them are really good, too. Now, I've bought, you know, five games in, in one kind of splurge and splashed out, but, you know, I won't be doing this often. It was, you know, it's once every blue moon, isn't it, that something comes out like this. So I thought I'd just get this, and I've been really good, you know, with pickups. Hardly bought anything this year, and, you know, I thought, well, let's treat myself. Why not? Again. So, um, yeah, please don't obviously expect, you know, PlayStation Vita games every week. It's not going to happen, because they are pretty pricey. I mean, I got some of these for like about $20, but they are retailing for like 40 although if you shop around a bit, you'd probably pay about 30 But the one thing I've noticed in the UK is they're a lot more expensive. You know, I mean, this is like, say, $30. In the UK, you look at 30 quid, and 30 quid is around about $47, $46, $47. So yeah, it's a lot more expensive over there than it is here. But yeah, I do think the games are really good, and like I say, even though I'm not going to be picking them up on a massively regular basis, you will be seeing them from now on. Maybe maybe one a month, or maybe two a month. I mean, we'll see. It depends how uh, how greedy I'm feeling. But anyway, PlayStation Vita. I'm not a massive handheld fan. This is the thing to remember. But I absolutely love it. And um, the Wii U, for me personally, well, it isn't for me. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. But I just can't be buying all these things every five minutes. I'm happy with this. I've made my choice to get a PlayStation Vita. You know, Sony's never let me down. I love the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3. The Vita's obviously fantastic. I've had Sony TVs and stuff and Walkmans, you know, going back to when I was a kid, you know, in the in the late 80s and early 90s. So it's a brand which you know that are going to do well. You know, they're going to stick with their product and they're going to make a success of it. Whereas, you know, you could say the same on Nintendo, of course, but I'm just thinking, you know, a 3DS to me was a little bit of a disaster. Um or at least it was at launch, maybe it's improved a lot, I don't know. But who cares, it's, it's a great bit of kit, you know, Nintendo, Sony, whatever, they're all great, but for me personally, you know, never say never with a Wii U, but it's not really of interest. I'm happy to get this. Anyway guys, I'll be back soon with uh, maybe a better video than this shaky camera malarkey. So, um, yeah, see you soon. Adios amigos.